Good grazing management here in the fall on these native warm season grasses is going to have a huge influence on our production of forage next year. So let's learn why that is and some ways, some principles to look at that with. So being a native warm season grass, these grasses grow in the warm season, right? When it gets cool, their production starts to taper off. So this plant is ready for fall and it's like, okay, I need to ship these sugars downstairs to my roots. And then that plant sits there through the winter, has enough food to survive the winter because it has to feed itself during the winter too, it has to live and breathe and do all the things the plant needs to do. But then next spring, it has a good supply of root reserves. It uses those and it jumps back up with good vigorous growth in the spring. How do I actually manage for that? So let's look at the two rules of thumb that we can use on our native warm season grasses to manage here during the fall. One is called the 845 principle and the other is to have it 18 inches high at frost. The first way to think about it is the 845 principle. This principle says 45 days before frost, have the grass eight inches high or higher and stay off of it until after frost. So let's look at that a little bit more in depth. So our grass right now is something like knee high and this is Eastern Gamma grass specifically here in this little area. If we were to come in here 45 days before frost and you can determine what 45 days before frost is in your area if you don't know your average first date of frost in the fall, you can look those up. And I just went on Google and the farmer's, farmer's al almanac was happy to help me out and figure out my last date or first date of frost. And they tell me that somewhere mid-October 15th, 20th is my average first day of frost. So if I do the math on 45 days, I'm like, okay, 15 days in October, 30 days in September, that's 45 days. So the first of September or the last of August, I need to be done with my grazing. I wanna have it eight inches high, 45 days before frost, or eight inches or more, 45 days before frost, and then stay off of it, ideally, until after frost. So if we take and look at what that looks like, we can cut on one of these plants So here's our leaves from the plant. And the stuff I left down there is about eight inches tall. So if I stick my hand down here to the ground, you know, these leaves are right about there. So nice eight inches tall. So that is what we're looking for. Because what's gonna happen now, that if we turn the cows in here and they did the same thing, they ate this part of the plant and they left this bottom part of the plant so what they're leaving is this, these stems, these coarse pieces down here that really are not adding much quantity and they're sure not adding quality to the diet of the animal. So if they leave these, what's gonna happen is this plant is going to regrow in the next 45 days before frost. And so it's gonna sprout up leaves, hopefully we get them back up you know, something around 18 inches high. And in that meantime, it is collecting sugars and it's moving them downstairs into the root system. So of course the plant makes the sugars by photosynthesis, the sun, the water, the carbon dioxide, that's the plant food or sugars. And so it will move those down into the root system, which prepares our plant to live through the winter and then be big and vigorous and ready to go next spring. Another rule of thumb is to have the grass 18 inches high at the first day of frost and remove the livestock from the field 45 to 60 days before that average first day of frost. So what does that look like? Well, our grass is, you know, something over probably 18 inches high right now. Uh, we're over knee high. This is what we want this plant to look like in 45 days. So we're 45 days before our average first day of frost. And this is what, maybe a little shorter would be fine, 
but somewhere around 18 inches is where we want it to be. And we don't want to graze it that 45 to 60 days before that date of frost. So we could come in here right now, I'm basically a couple days before 45 days of frost. So we could come in here, graze this, now we don't want to put, we're trying to graze it just to that magic height of having 18 inches of regrowth by the time of frost. It's a little hard for me to predict what that's going to look like if I'm not out there every year doing it and I don't just catalog that in my mind that, okay, 45 days before frost, I grazed it this hard and this is what the year was like weather-wise and all of those details that go into it. And so I really like to combine the two concepts of the 845 principle, have the grass eight inches high 45 days before frost, and the 18 inch principle with that 45 to 60 days of rest at frost time, so 18 inches then. So if I have it at eight inches 45 days before frost, that's probably gonna give me, at frost time, my height of 18 inches of regrowth. And so I kind of like to think of it, both of them together, but if you find that you had it eight inches high, 45 days before frost, 45, 60 days before frost, and you did not get to 18 inches high, and that's a little dependent upon soils, right? But if you didn't get to 18 inches high, you need to consider, is this a problem? And if it's a problem, adjust. So maybe you say 60 days before frost, I want it eight inches high. Or, you know, I want 45 days before frost, I want it to be 12 inches high. Now, back to that soils part. If your soil is really dry, your plants are never going to get as tall just because they don't have the soil moisture. It's a different situation, right, than this area here, which has decent soil for our area. So keep in mind that soils are gonna vary the height of the plant. Um, but the concept we're really after here is don't graze off the growing point. So our grass here has this growing point down here. And if we graze this off it like a lawnmower would, we're just making so much work. This plant has to regrow all of its leaf material, all of this stem material down here. It's just a ton of work, which is depleting the root reserves of that plant. So the big principle here, let your plants, your native warm season grass plants, replenish their root reserves before frost so that they can be healthy for next spring. This stand of eastern gamma grass is of course very even in height compared to what it could be. Some of the blue stems right now have seed heads sticking out and depending on how the grazing management of the summer went, you know, you may have a situation where it's not all even height like this. Um, of course, there is variability here, but it's a lot more even than it could be. So let's actually go to another place and look at what it looks like when it's not so even height. So it doesn't always look so nice and even as the eastern gamma grass did where we were. Up here, we have more diversity. Uh, we've got big blue stem here, Indian grass here, and this has been grazed through the season but what we're seeing is that because these plants go to seed later in the fall, the eastern gamma grass sticks up its head earlier, we had a more even look down there, whereas this has leaves way down at the ground, heads way up here, head high nearly to me, and this is a fairly dry site here. But let's get in and look at what is actually the height. We're not looking at having it eight inches high on its seed head, we're talking about, or 18 inches high at frost, on the seed head. We don't care about the height of the seed head. That's not important. What's really important is what is the grass, the leaves of the grass, what is that level? So let's get in here and look at some individual plants. So this was grazed actually just a couple days ago. So here we're just a little more than 45 days out of frost. And if I look at the heights of these plants, this one here has very good height to it. What are we? Probably 14 inches or more high. Okay, so then let's go look right over here. Here's another warm season grass plant. And we're probably more like the eight inches high on that particular plant. Um, continuing on across, here's one. Maybe that got a little shorter. That one might just be six inches. Uh, here's one, and this is, you know, we, some of these have obviously got seed heads on them. So we're ignoring the height of that seed head and we're looking down here at this grass 
and this one's probably eight inches. Uh, it kind of depends on the leaf that you're looking at. So this is what we're looking at when we have a planting that has seed heads on it. Ignore the seed heads, look at the vegetation and see what its height is. As you think about how this might apply to your operation, think about the amount of grazing land that you have. What percentage of that is in native warm season grasses or diverse native grasslands? Because that matters. If you have, let's say, 10% of your land in native warm season grasses, then it's really important that production off of that 10% is so important to your summer operation you don't have a big proportion of your land in native warm season grasses. Go ahead and follow this principle of allowing for fall rest pretty closely because it's just so important to the production of next year. You're just sacrificing next year's production. But on the flip side, let's say you've got 50% of your operation in natives, whether that's native warm season grasses or diverse native grasslands that have native warm season grasses in them. It, is now a concept of, well, where do I put the cows in the meantime? Um, like here in our neck of the woods, we try to stockpile the fescue. And so if you can't be on your warm seasons and you have to be on your fescue, well, you're not stockpiling the fescue. It's this big conundrum, right? But it's less important that every acre of warm seasons of natives gets managed in the tip top way if you've got a large acreage of native warm season grasses. And so just think that through. Now, if you decide that you want to go ahead and like, no, I'm going to go ahead and graze my warm seasons here through this fall period, uh, you want really high heights, right? You would like to have it 18 inches high by the time you go into frost. So maybe you can achieve that even though you're grazing it. That's going to still allow the plant to put some root reserves down. But another really important principle if you're going to do this, graze it in this don't graze period, is that you want to not do the same thing on the same acre of land every year. So if we choose this area that we're going to go ahead and graze it here in this fall time frame, even though we know that's not the best for the health of this gamma grass, don't do the same thing to this acre of land next year. Go to the other side of the farm or another field and do it in there. So that random management is really important because when you think about it, in a native grassland, the bison were somewhere 365 days a year. Bison, elk, all the other herbivores. They didn't just like pack up and quit eating during the fall time frame so that the warm season grasses could replenish their root reserves. They were somewhere, but they weren't the same place every year. So keep that principle in mind as you go about it. I'm Elizabeth with Hamilton Native Outpost and we want you to be successful with the management of your native warm season grasses, which is why we do videos like this. It is important that you treat your native warm season grasses well and they will treat you well, produce lots of good forage for you, good high tonnage and high quality forage. If you have interest in more management videos on native warm season grasses, we have a series of them. So check those out on YouTube or on our website, hamiltonnativeoutpost.com. Or if you are interested in planting native warm season grasses so that you too can have forage that looks like this, check out our website for different options of warm season grasses or mixes.